The Primus presents the consequences of Saudi Arabia turning its deserts into a farmland oasis, part two. Saudi Arabia imports more than 80% of its food needs from oil income. The 1970s saw the kingdom embark on a period of rapid agricultural expansion. Agriculture has been a significant priority for those seeking to boost the country's sustainability and decrease the risk of global food supply network breakdowns. Saudi Arabia has been developing central pivot systems over the last 50 years. The Arabian Peninsula gets extremely little rainfall and suffers from water loss. Two Saudi royals began a development initiative in these locations. They spent eight years living among Bedouin villages, constructing rock terraces, and inspecting dams and shallow ditches. Saudi Arabia employs desalination programs to convert salt water into fresh water to serve clean water. If the whole west coast is covered by the project, 30 million acres of land may be converted to agricultural lands. Positively, Saudi Arabia's agricultural potential might be boosted by a factor of six, increasing GDP by up to 5%. All of this may seem to be fantastic and exceptional at this point. However, viewing the other side of the tale, it has several benefits and drawbacks. Looking at it from a climactic standpoint, transforming a desert into a farmland oasis, with the significant success that desert greening has made in sterile settings such as deserts, it is undeniably a viable alternative for combating climate change. It is hoped that it would eat deserts recovering vast amounts of natural resources for the rest of the planet. Second, population pressure may be significantly alleviated and individuals will reside there. Third, transforming a desert into a farmland oasis will result in an increase in rainfall, which will support the development of various plant species in the region and aid in lowering the temperature. Rain showers supply subsurface water to a natural oasis like the Tuat. Moisture may be trapped and held in pockets by impermeable rock and stone subtrain. Water may accumulate and percolate to the surface via lengthy faulting subsurface ridges or volcanic dikes. Any occurrence of water is subsequently exploited by migrating birds, which also transmit seeds with their droppings, which will sprout along the water's edge, establishing an oasis. It may also be used to grow crops. There are also drawbacks to converting a desert into a farmland oasis and the benefits. The pest and disease issue may worsen when the environment becomes wetter due to more plant and tree planting. One difficulty that might develop is the matter of locust plagues. That's correct. The swarming parasites are most recognized for their biblical connotations. Wait, locusts can't be that nasty, can they? A tiny swarm consumes more food than 2,500 individuals can finish in a day. So yes, they can be pretty horrible. Second. It would have a domino effect impact on the ecosystem. A desert delivers nutrients in the form of windblown dust across seas, literally. As a result, it may be prudent not to overgreen any desert. Wind power, for example, carries sand from the Sahara Desert into the air after crossing the Atlantic, South America. The dust collects up moisture on its voyage and it falls from the sky. It brings rain with it. This combination of dust and rain falls on the Amazon rainforest fertilizing it and giving the environment the water it needs. Similarly, transforming the Saudi deserts into farming oasis would impact the climate in a certain area of the planet. As previously said, Saudi Arabia turns to aquifers to solve its water concerns. In a nation where rain is scarce, the practice of draining groundwater, as the Barian business does, might be hazardous. Groundwater accounts for an estimated 98% of naturally occurring fresh water in Saudi Arabia. According to Halverson, during the 1900s, farmers were pumping an average of 5 trillion gallons per year. At that pace, it would only take 25 years to empty Lake Erie entirely. The issue is that these subsurface aquifers require a long time to replenish. So, if a farmer does drain water faster than its supply, the basins will ultimately run empty. Saudi Arabia does not get nearly enough yearly rainfall to compensate for such losses. Its aquifers had built up over tens of thousands of years and were now being drained all at once. In addition, the country increasingly employs desalination for its water needs. Although some may believe that the nuclear desalination process is too wonderful to be accurate, several drawbacks assist put the process into perspective. Because this process includes utilizing nuclear power plants to generate electricity to desalinate the water, there is a risk that some radioactive contaminants may be discharged into the water. Even though most facilities have safety procedures in place, nuclear energy is a hazardous chemical that might make its way into its drinkable water via an accident or a leakage. 
Solar energy seems to be a smart alternative, since it is a safe, non-polluting, efficient, and green energy supply. This does not degrade the environment. Solar energy is a renewable energy source that can create electricity for as long as light. While solar energy cannot be made at night or on rainy days, it may be consumed frequently during the day. Solar energy from the sun is a consistent and continuous source of power that may be harvested in distant regions. Solar cells, in general, do not need maintenance and may run for an extended period. More solar panels may be added as required. As a result, solar cell technology is progressing. As our non-renewable energy supply dwindles, the globe must shift to renewable energy sources. Do let us know what you think about all this development Saudi Arabia has pulled off in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That's it for today. Till next time, peace.